Duke. Duke. All right, headed to the gym. And I have not shown a training vlog in a couple of weeks, maybe about a month, because there's just been so much semifinals content. I was at one of the semifinals, and then I was at the ranch for an event, so, so much CrossFit content, but finally, a chance to get back to some training content in the gym. Today is not a crazy volume day. I did a lot of volume yesterday. We had a weightlifting day. We cleaned, we snatched, we front squatted, jerked, and had a little Metcon. So yesterday was a really big day. Today's a little bit of a, not light day, but lighter comparatively. We've got some accessory work, then we've got a pretty cool Metcon that I'm excited about, and then some more accessories. The first accessory is with the GHD, second is more core stuff, but let me tell you about the Metcon, because the Metcon looks fun. The Metcon is a sort of ladder, so we go up it and then we go back down. It made more of a pyramid. Pyramid's probably a better term. It's a pyramid. So we've got 1K row, 30 toes to bar, 10 deadlifts, 15 strict wall facing handstand push ups, 10 deadlifts, and 30 toes to bar, and then another 1K row. So you got a bunch of things. Sandwiched in the middle, you got 15 wall facing handstand push ups, and then a bunch of things again. So, I've not done a ton of those wall-facing handstand push-ups. I don't think I've ever done 15 in one day. Will today be the day? We're gonna find out. And it's been an interesting time training because with semifinals, with having traveled there down to Pasadena, putting out a ton of content, my training sort of got messed up. I took some time off for that because they didn't have any time to train there. I slept three and a half to five hours a night, so, Sleeping wasn't good, training was not happening, and then I got back and I was just super sleep deprived, still worked out, body didn't feel great though, coming back from being sleep deprived and getting used to sleeping again. Then I just didn't have a lot of time down because I was working my full-time job and came back from semis and went right back to work. And then after that, I had the ranch thing, so I've just been, just been busy, very, very busy. And still, definitely got my training in, but sleeping less, not eating as well, just didn't feel great. So I've been feeling a little bit better the last couple of days, more like myself. So we will see if uh, today feels pretty good too. Fingers crossed, I think it will. It looks like a fun workout, so you know, at the very least, we're gonna have some fun. You wanna say hi to Carson before I go? Carson, come here, buddy. Carson, Carson, come on, let's go. Wanna go outside? I think he's coming. Carson, come here. Come on, come say hi to the vlog. Come on, Carson. A little bit farther. Come on, buddy, over here. Let's go, let's go. Come here, oh. Carson, come here. Come here. Sound of the vlog. Well, there he is. <laughs> you wanna go outside? You wanna go for a little walk before I leave? Let's go. Come on. Starting out with a short look at my warm up, and I am beginning with some burpees, because burpees are always an excellent way to get the body warm, even though they get a bad reputation. Now doing some banded marches. I always like the glute band. And I also like this, the TheraBand, to warm up my shoulders. I just feel like it's a great way to get my shoulders warm. And threw in some inchworm push-ups. Just another way to get the body moving, get the heart rate up a little bit before I get into the strength portion of my accessory work. So to start out with some work on the GHD. And it was three rounds. The first movement was 12 GHD glute hamstring raises. That's what you're seeing me do some of right now. And these are a pretty challenging movement, requires a lot from your hamstrings. You can do it with the assistance of a band to help you get all the way up. 
Um, I'm not doing them banded here, but definitely a challenge. Definitely feel them in my hamstrings the next day. And uh, just a good way to get some development there. Now I'm moving into the 12 GHD hip extensions. You'll see me do a couple of those here. And that is before we move off of the GHD and we move on to a box to do some box step ups. So this is 12 alternating steps of a back rack box step up with the box just at or below parallel and working with a light weight. So I decided to just do the barbell and make sure I push all the way through my working leg each time and not get assistance from that second leg to really focus on growing some muscles. Not gonna lie, just a little bit worried about these strict handstand push-ups while facing in the middle. We'll see how they go. Okay, into the workout and the real meat of this session. And I'm gonna pop it up on the screen for you so we could talk about it. And it's a long one, so we're gonna have time to talk about this workout, about training. So we will start with this workout. So this Metcon is four time, 1K row. That's what I'm doing right now. As you can see, it's gonna take a little while. 30 toes to bar, 10 deadlifts, 185 for women. I believe that would be 275 for men. 15 strict wall facing handstand pushups, 10 deadlifts, also at 185 still, 30 toes to bar. 1K row. So I mentioned this before, it's kind of like a pyramid. You go up and then you go back down. And I was speaking with my coach who programmed this and my coach, his name is Jackson Miller. My training is done through PRs All Day, which is the group that programs for Diablo CrossFit, the gym I go to. We have RX Plus programming and they do individualized programming for certain athletes. I get some individualized programming from my coach Jackson and he happened to be at the gym right before I started this so I was talking to him about the workout and how to approach it and one thing he said to me is that we are focusing on things that are more like what Adrian Bosman programs because now we are in the Adrian Bosman era of CrossFit and there is some differences in the programming compared to what Dave Castro used to program. So you have to adjust to what you're seeing. I personally don't plan to ever be a semifinals athlete, but I do like to do local competitions. I definitely love to do the open and advocate that people do the open. So with that in mind, the open and quarterfinals, I made quarterfinals this year and plan to do quarterfinals hopefully in the future if I make it. Those things are programmed by Adrian Bosman. So all year we're preparing for some local comps, but also the open and quarterfinals. So we're getting used to some movements that we are expecting to see more in the open and quarterfinals. We saw the strict wall facing handstand pushups make their way into quarterfinals this past year. I didn't make it to them because that workout started with a front squat that was just very heavy for me above my PR. So I did not get to the strict wall facing handstand pushups in that workout, but I did get to them in this workout. And I don't think I've ever done 15 strict wall facing handstand pushups consecutively. I'm not sure if I've ever done 15 in one day prior to this workout. So it was um, a little bit of a challenge for me and new but I got through them and sort of had to keep them in small sets. But right now we are finishing up that 1K row. Maybe not finishing up. We probably got about a minute left. But we are on that 1K row. And um, for me, this first 1K row, I approached it more as something to prime my body for the rest of this workout. Because if you're going to give this workout a try, that first 1K is uh, not where you need to win the workout. <laughs> you don't need to go as hard as you can in the first 1K because there's a lot more to go. And if you burn out, you're not going to be able to get through the rest of it. Also, this workout reminds me a tiny bit of workout six 
from or test test six from semifinals this year. Most of the movements are different, but it is similar in the sense that you start with a bunch of movements, have one movement in the middle that's going to be the real challenging thing. And in this workout and in that semifinals workout, that movement was both strict wall facing handstand push ups. And they both actually have a row in it, but that's sort of where the similarities end. But the format is similar. So finishing up on that row, running over to grab myself some chalk, chalk up my hands before I start that 30 toes to bar. And I definitely broke up these toes to bar sooner than I felt like I would have to because I just wanted to be, make sure that I was putting my shoulders in the best place possible to do as well as I possibly could on that middle challenging part, which are those 15 strict wall facing handstand pushups. So got a good set in, chalked up my hands. And one thing I try to do when I am gonna break things up is try to keep my breaks short. Because once you start breaking things up, it's easy to keep on breaking them. And it's also easy to just keep looking at the bar and not getting up there again. So I try to keep my breaks short because, like I said, once you break it once, you have that excuse, I already broke it up, I can keep breaking it. And uh, you just kind of got to keep chipping away. I think one of the best ways to get through a longer workout is to just make sure you can always keep moving. So don't do your max possible set. If you know that the max you can do is 20 toes to bar, I wouldn't just do 20 toes to bar, even though you know you could do it because those next 10 going to be close to impossible. So you want to make sure that you pick sets that you can keep moving with and that's going to help more than going unbroken. Is if, Unless you can go you know, completely unbroken, but if you can't go unbroken through the entire set, Pick sets that you know you can keep moving with. So I decided to belt up for this. I don't necessarily need to belt up for 185, but 185 for me is a fairly heavy deadlift. It's not an easy deadlift. So I figured why not take the assistance of the belt and just help me move a little bit better and maintain longer for the workout. And that was my dog barking as I try to record this voiceover. Apologies for that. So keeping moving through these deadlifts and it's a, it's only 10, so it's not a huge number, but I did try to do at least doubles as long as I could because once you pull that bar off the ground once, you don't wanna have to do, like it, it's easier to get that second rep if you can. So. I did do some singles, but tried to do doubles as much as possible. And when you're approaching this, I definitely recommend a weight that you can do mostly doubles with as opposed to doing, you know, all singles because that just, it's a lot. Going on to the 15 strict wall facing handstand pushups. And the standard here, we did the standard similar to what it was at semifinals. So your chest has to touch the ground before you start the set. So you basically have to wall walk, but you don't have to do the full wall walk. You can touch your chest and then move your hands in, make it a little easier. That was a set of three, and that was as good as they were going to be. That was it. <laughs> I did do a bunch of doubles, but the three was, uh, was my max set for this workout. So there you go, I touched the ground with my chest, and then I moved my hands back because you don't necessarily have to do the full wall walk. You just have to touch your chest to the ground. I saw some people do that, move their hands back at semis. So that's sort of where I got that idea from. I also saw a lot of people roll out of this in semis and I just uh, didn't have the confidence to try that. So I just came off the wall sideways. Just felt a little bit safer than doing that little somersault, but kind of looked fun. Something I want to try at some point, but uh, today, today was not the day. So we're just chipping away here. This definitely was the longest part of this workout and the most taxing part of this workout for me, even though it is the fewest reps of the whole workout. And this is how it was designed from talking with my coach, 
was that this was going to be the crux of the workout. This is where you're going to get, if you're going to get stuck somewhere, this was it. So I'm shaking out my arms, walking around, just giving myself a second to recover before going back to the wall because I was worried about going back too quickly and failing because failing is going to take more time than you want to take on this kind of thing. So while walking back into it, and I was at this point sticking with those sets of two reps and looking all right, but I love handstand push-ups when they're kipping. I don't mind strict, but they are substantially harder for me than kipping. And once your gymnastics goes, it goes. So I was actually pretty happy with the fact that I was able to stick with twos and that set of three for most of this because I've not done a ton of these strict wall facing. And when I did the strict handstand pushups in the open, I did them all as singles. So the fact that a few months later I'm doing doubles with the wall facing, which I find more challenging, is definitely a good sign. But it took a while. It's something else I wanted to talk about while we were watching this video and in this in this video that I'm creating right now is um, getting back into training because I had a lot of travel, um, a lot of bad sleep involved at that travel, and my training was off. And I think part of getting back into training is trying to have fun with it and have appropriate expectations. Because the first couple days, maybe even week of getting back into training after a little bit of time off and off of your habits, right? Off of good eating, off of good sleeping, your body's not going to feel 100% right away. You're likely going to feel just off in the gym. Have fun with it and don't have crazy expectations. Because if you were, you know, on your before that and doing great, you're not always doing great after that. And you just saw me there fail. That was the 15th rep. I would have been done and able to move back to the barbell. And I failed the 15th rep. Which means that I, you know, sort of paced it out fairly well. Because I didn't fail until my last rep. But if I maybe just waited a tiny bit longer before doing that last set of two, I might have been able to get that last rep. But... We're going to get it here slowly, and then we're going to run back to the deadlift bar, popping the belt back on, and decided to start off with a fairly big set here compared to the last set, and that's mostly because I was a little bit pissed that I missed that last handstand push-up and felt like I needed to make up time, so I did a set of five here just to uh, feel accomplished. I needed a second to feel accomplished. And sort of like what I was talking about before, doing things that are fun and doing things that make you feel like you're accomplishing something can definitely help. So approached that bar and was like, I missed some time, lost some time, need to make it up and knocked out a set of five at 185, which is pretty heavy for me. But also this 185 is feeling better than it felt in quarterfinals, which is another accomplishment. I mean, we've been much more focused on training than I actually was prior to the Open and quarterfinals. So hopefully that'll pay off this coming Open. But uh, it seems to be paying off so far. Back to these toes to bar. This set of toes to bar was definitely harder than the first set. And earlier this week, I did 90 GHD sit-ups for time. And um, my core wasn't obliterated from that like somebody who hasn't been training GHD sit-ups I do train them but I was definitely feeling my core on these toes to bar like I wasn't feeling it just like walking around but definitely realized that I had done 90 GHD sit-ups like two days before this while I was doing this but we got to get that core strong, help me in my lifts, and just, you know, core. Everything's core to extremity, right? That's a big thing 
CrossFit teaches, CrossFit teaches in the level one. So strengthening that core, never a bad thing. But getting through this set of 30 and uh, I'm not done yet. I just decided to turn on the rower to feel like I was, uh, to feel accomplished. That's also a theme of this video. Do little things that make you feel like you're doing something. And when I'm resting, I like to feel like I'm still doing something. So I went and turned on the rower and I'm gonna go turn it to the calories or the meters, wherever it has to be. And then I think I'm gonna finish up these toes to bar here before I get back on the rower for another 1K row. And this part of the workout, it's, it's a little bit more of a push than the first 1K row, but it's also more fatigued. So you feel like you're pushing more and you're trying to push more, yet you're not going that much faster if you're going faster at all because you're fatigued from all the other stuff you did. But uh, it's one of those things to put your head down and grind because it's the longest part of this workout, actually. The total time you spend on the rower is longer than I spent on anything else, I believe. Even longer than those handstand push-ups, even if they felt long. So during this row, uh, at first, I was just trying to get the wheel moving and sort of get my heart rate under control and be fairly smooth for the first, you know, 500 meters ish of it because 1K is still a fairly long row. It wasn't really something, at least for me, that I could go out and sprint because it just, it's just still a long time on the rower. I mean, it's going to be at least four minutes for me longer than that. But for most people, at least three and a half to four and a half minutes. So you don't want to sprint the very beginning of it. But near the end, like the last 200, 300 meters, I did try to pick up the pace substantially after trying to keep it more at a consistent pace near the beginning. So I still didn't want to go slow, but I tried to be a little bit less aggressive than I was at the very end to save like a kick at the end to finish things out. I also had thought in my head it was 500 meters. Well, I knew it was 1K, but I don't know why. I thought it was going to take like two minutes. And then I realized halfway through, I'm like, nope, nope. It's going to take like four and a half minutes. <laughs> um, so just sort of settled in after I realized that. But overall, this was a pretty challenging workout, but a fun workout. I like that we're adapting to what we think Bosman is doing because the tests are going to be different. I know there's a lot of people out there that still miss Dave Castro. It's awesome to see that Dave is still involved in CrossFit and is getting sort of more involved in the programming to some degree because I heard that he is now involved in overseeing all of the programming to some degree. Like he is sort of helping with making sure there's consistency between what's online and what we're seeing in the open and all that stuff. I believe he has a hand in that now. So sure, Dave is still involved, but Adrian is the main programmer of the games, of the open, of quarterfinals, of semifinals. So we have to adapt to that. And things look a little bit different and strict wall facing handstand push-ups, I believe, are here to stay. And we're likely to see them from a deficit. We did at the games, but that's something that could make its way down into even quarterfinals in the future. I wouldn't be shocked to see strict wall facing handstand push-ups make their way into the open at the end of a workout, something that you have to earn to get to. So I don't think these are going anywhere. If you haven't been practicing, they're probably worth throwing into some skill strength sessions, not necessarily a Metcon right away, but definitely something that you should start training. If you don't have a strict regular, like outward facing handstand push up, 
that may be a better place to start. Although I know for some people, the wall facing handstand pushups are easier. And you can also use a mat to make the, like an ab mat to bring up the ground a little bit and make the wall facing handstand pushup a little bit less of a deficit. So something probably worth trying and finishing this up at about 9.17 and then uh, saying hi to the floor <laughs> afterwards because that's just standard challenging workout for sure. Ew. Ew. So I just ran out of the gym because I had to drop Carson off at boarding. I did that and now I am back at the gym to finish my ab work because got to get it all in. And today's my day off, so I have a little bit more time to run out and run back if I have to, like today. So came back to do this core work, mostly because I don't have a bench to do this at home with. So it was complete two to three rounds of a 30 second right adduction plank, then a 30 second on the left side. And then I had some side plank rotations that I could have done at home, but I uh, didn't have the bench to do the other stuff. And someone even noticed that I came back after having already left. I you left. I did leave. Oh. Um, I, was like, I swear I <laughs> I had to, I had to drop my dog off at grooming. Oh. I'm a single dog mom, so yeah. like, someone's gonna do it to me. Yeah. So I had to run home, grab him, oh. take him to the groomer. Dropped them off, and then I had these planks to do. So I came back. I was like, <laughs> and then finished the second side of these plank rotations before heading out again. Just finished up and uh, treated myself to some Starbucks. It's funny how perfectly that is pictured in the back of my uh, my shot right now. But so yeah, I'm at Starbucks. But great session. Starting to feel pretty good again after all the travel. And I'm glad to be back in a groove because this is going to happen again later this summer when games time happens and I have to fly for that. So probably feel even rougher then, but it's good to get back on track and um, just know that if you miss a couple days because you have to travel or do something like I had to do work, um, you can get back into it. Just takes a little bit of time. You got to be patient with yourself, but it all comes back. That was a hard workout though. That wasn't like <laughs> the peak look at my fitness because the workout was just a challenge for me. The weights were heavy and the movements were something that I'm working on, but I did it and I did it as prescribed. So for me, that's an accomplishment and I'm happy with that. I will put a video in at the end of Carson after his grooming. I mentioned that I dropped him off to get grooming a little while ago. So I will pop that in so you can see how handsome he looks. And I will see you in the next one. Hey, buddy, look at me. Carson. Oh, yeah. Say hi. <laughs>